there's some very urgent information that I needed to get out here as fast as possible um, regarding the situation with Russia, Ukraine, and Naftali Bennett. Um, the first thing I want to speak about is that in Kiev, Ukraine, in a dramatic escalation of east-west tensions over Russia's invasion of Ukraine, President Vladimir Putin ordered Russian nuclear forces put on high alert on Sunday in response to what he called aggressive statements by leading NATO powers. The order means Putin has ordered Russia's nuclear weapons prepared for increased readiness to launch raising the threat that the tensions could boil over into nuclear warfare. In giving it, the Russian leader also cited hard-hitting financial sanctions imposed by the West against Russia, including Putin himself. Speaking at a meeting with his top officials, Putin directed the Russian defense minister and the chief of the military's general staff to put the nuclear deterrent forces in a quote, special mode of combat duty, end quote. Senior officials of the leading NATO countries also allow aggressive statements against our country. Therefore, I order the Minister of Defense and the Chief of the General Staff of the Russian Armed Forces to transfer the deterrence forces of the Russian army to a special mode of combat duty, Putin said in a televised comments. The Russian leader earlier this week threatened to retaliate harshly against any nations that intervened directly in the conflict in Ukraine, and he specifically raised the specter of his country's status as a nuclear power. So, that's the first dramatic addition and that I wanted to report on. Also, this has developed as well and it says that the EU shuts airspace to Russian airliners. Um, the European Union's chief executive says that the 27 nation bloc will close its airspace to Russia airlines fund supplies of weapons to Ukraine, and ban some pro-Kremlin media outlets in response to Russia's invasion. European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen said Sunday that for the first time ever, the European Union will finance the purchase and delivery of weapons and other equipment to a country that is under attack. Von der Leyen added that we are shutting down the EU airspace for Russians. We are proposing a prohibition on all Russian-owned, Russian-registered, or Russian-controlled aircraft. These aircraft will no more be able to land in, take off, or overfly the territory of the EU. Wow. This is something that's not happened before. She said also the EU will ban the Kremlin's media machine, the state-owned Russia Today and Sputnik, as well as their subsidiaries, will no longer be able to spread their lies to justify Putin's war and to sow the division over our union. Von der Leyen added that the EU will also target Belarus President Alexander Lushenko for supporting Russia's widespread military campaign in Ukraine. And then the most dramatic thing I think after that would be this article in the Times of Israel. It's also in Reuters and it's all over the news this morning that Prime Minister Naftali Bennett proposed that Israel serve as a mediator between Russia and Ukraine during a phone call with President Vladimir Putin on Sunday, according to a readout released by the Kremlin, which did not say how the latter responded to the Jerusalem's offer. Israeli sources confirmed Bennett's offer. According to the Russian readout, Putin told Bennett that Russia has sent a delegation to Gommel in southern Belarus to conduct peace talks with Ukrainian officials. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky, who had proposed the idea of Israeli mediation to Bennett on Friday, emphasized the country's readiness for peace talks. Initially refusing to hold peace talks in Moscow, 
ally Belarus, which has allowed Russia to use its territory as a staging ground for the invasion that began Thursday. Zelensky agreed later Sunday that the Ukrainian delegation would meet with the Russian delegation without preconditions on the Ukrainian-Belarusian border. Bennett initiated the call to Putin, which was held at around noon and lasted 20 minutes. Channel 12 News reported citing Israeli sources. The Prime Minister updated the United States and Ukraine both before and after the conversation. Bennett first expressed sorrow regarding the situation, which he said he had hoped would not develop into a grave humanitarian crisis. Putin told Bennett that he had no choice but to act since Ukraine broke its obligation, the TV news report said. He said it's already ready to negotiate and that his, represent and that his representatives were in Belarus, but the Ukrainians were spurning the opportunity to do so. At that point, Bennett said Israel is ready to assist in any way possible in bringing the sides together now or in the future in light of its unique relationship with both countries. We are at one hour before midnight. It's important to find the optimal points for dialogue, said Bennett, according to the TV report. Bennett and Putin agreed to remain in close contact, an Israeli official said. And of course, you know, Russia is against um, Israel having the Golan Heights. So <clears throat> anyway, the, the phone call marked the first time Bennett and Putin have spoken since Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Earlier Sunday, Bennett said that Israel will be sending additional humanitarian aid to war-torn Ukraine as the Russian invasion into European Eastern European country enters its fourth day. In the next two phases, a plane will arrive in Ukraine with 100 tons of Israeli humanitarian equipment for civilians to combat, uh, to the combat zones, I'm sorry, and those who are trying to leave, the Premier said during a weekly cabinet meeting. The, de de the delivered equipment will include water purification kits, medical equipment, as well as drugs, tents, blankets, sleeping bags, and additional equipment for civilians who are not in their homes in the cold winter weather. Bennett also thanked the foreign ministry and its personnel for working around the clock to assist the Israelis who are at the border and want to leave there and come home. He said Israel and the entire world were watching the difficult events unfold in Ukraine and said he hopes the conflict will be resolved before the war develops further and the humanitarian consequences will be much worse than anyone can imagine. Hold on one second. I'm sorry, I'm a little shaky from my diabetic stuff. We are praying for the well-being of the citizens of Ukraine and hope that additional bloodshed will be avoided. We are conducting a measured and responsive policy. Bennett said that the cabinet would convene in the evening for a comprehensive discussion to examine the implications of the situation for Israel, including diplomatic and economic repercussions, as well as the issue of absorbing immigrants from Ukraine. But despite expressing concern for Ukraine and warning of humanitarian consequences, Bennett refrained from condemning Russia or even mentioning it by name as he did on Thursday when addressing the Russian invasion for the first time. The world order as we know it is changing, he said Thursday. The world is much less stable and our region too is changing every day. These are difficult, tragic times, he added, expressing sorrow for Ukrainian citizens who were caught up in the situation. Foreign Minister Yair Lapid told a private meeting during a discussion on Russia's invasion of Ukraine that Israel must condemn dictators. Army Radio reported earlier Sunday, Israel must be on the right side and condemn dictators who attack democracies, he said. 
Israel has been careful in its comments on the conflict and Bennett has avoided criticizing Moscow publicly. This is believed to be at least partly due to its need to work with the Russian military presence in neighboring Syria. Lapid said last Thursday called the Russian attack on Ukraine a serious violation of the international order. However, in a statement said to be coordinated with Bennett, Lapid added, um, Israel condemns that attack and is ready and prepared to offer humanitarian assistance to Ukrainian citizens. So all of this was in the Times of Israel this morning. There's a lot more. There's just literally thousands of articles you can choose from. And this is just uh, about three of them that I'm sharing with you. Also, it uh, was noted that from Rabbi Tuli Weiss, a couple of days ago they were trying to get, raise money to fly Jews out of Ukraine so that they could bring them back to Jerusalem and to Israel and get them out of the war zone. So all of this is a very urgent set of developments and we're watching to see what's happening. And uh, according to what's coming in prophecy, we know that this whole thing has to do with the New World Order and they want to shut down individual countries and have one big global uh, governance. So, of course, they're going to shut down any country that wants to stay an individual country. Anyway, uh, that's a development with the EU, with the Russian planes of any kind not being able to fly over the entire European continent or land there or take off. Um, and the nuclear status that's being raised to another level is quite alarming, but we know that God's in control of all of these things. And I just ask you to keep your prayers for everyone involved and that God will sort out the good from the evil and only he knows what's really going on behind the scenes. We only have, you know, just partial data. We don't have everything that's gone on and why all these events are actually, you know, developing even further. But God said he was going to put a hook in the jaws and um, that's obviously happening right now. <laughs> so anyway, we still look forward to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I just wanted to get this urgent information out as soon as possible. And trying to do this on my phone, which I hope it comes through for you this morning. This is just uh, a report of urgent importance. And I'll talk to you later. And I pray you have a blessed day.